Hey everybody, this is John Fenn, Church Without Walls International, C-W-O-W-I.org. And hope you can go there, register, uh, sign up for my weekly thoughts, which is a, a weekly email, about two pages in print. Uh, it comes out every Friday morning, U.S. time, Friday morning, Saturday on the other side of the dateline. But cwowi.org and uh, all sorts of resources there, uh, including my weekly thoughts and e-newsletters and prophetic words and different stuff like that. So anyway, today talking to you more about things that the Lord spoke to me or the Father told me uh, that uh, changed my life and that I hope can change your life too. Um, the first thing I'm going to start out with is really has to do with our handicapped son, Chris. He's our oldest son. He was born with a cord around his neck in a slipknot. And, um, and anyway, he's at home. He was at home for the first 24 years of his life. And then we, he's been in a group home the last several years. And so we normally pick him up on Friday and uh, we'll return him Saturday when I'm not traveling. And so one of these days, uh, and I've shared this before, but, but some, we have new people joining all the time. And so, um, he was his normal routine Saturday morning is I give him a, a bath and then I'll transfer him onto the toilet where I'll put a shirt on him, pull his underpants, his shorts up and everything. I was putting his socks on him. I was be, bending down, putting his socks on him, but I was having a bit of a pity party that day. I was just kind of down. It was just like, you know, we've got Chris two days a week. And so I, I, I work early in the morning and late at night uh, on computer Skype messages uh, you know, whatever I need to do around him, because when he's active, he gets 100% of, of our attention. He's in a wheelchair and he's mentally about four years old, even though physically, as of this speaking, he's 40. But he's just an outgoing kid, you know, in, a, in an adult body. And everyone around town knows him and everything else. And so, any, so anyway, I was having this little bit of a pity party and just say, Father, you know, how can I do this? We've got our handicapped son. We've got the ministry. We've got, you know, different facets of our life, everything going on. And, and having a pity party. And I had just concluded, as I was putting on a sock, I had just concluded, I was just saying, Father, what am I, a beast of burden? And just then, Chris reaches over and pats my head and says, you're a good horse. And that, that was actually a prophecy. If you're categorizing things, that was a prophecy used of the Lord, inspired by the Lord to put me in my place. <laughs> because I just said, you're, am I a beast of burden? And he said, you're a good horse. So it was the Lord saying, straighten up your attitude. You haven't worked, you haven't shed blood for the cause of Jesus. You know, so get with it, kid. <laughs> you know, that's what he's saying. Chris, of course, didn't have a clue, but, but he's credited to, to heaven of being used by the Lord that way. So that was a, that was a blessing. Um, and it straightened up my attitude. Another one was when I was watching uh, a TV show, a rerun of a rerun that I'd seen many times before. So, um, I, I had a, I knew where the characters came in. I knew where they exited. I knew what they said. And it was so, I had seen that rerun enough times that, that I was bored. And so I was just sitting there thinking, it's like, father, I'm bored with this. And, you know, I know what everyone's going to say, where they're going to go, what their next step is going to be. And even when the commercials break, you know, and it's like, Father, you must be really bored because you know everything. You know my thoughts before I form them, before they come out my mouth. You know everything on everybody, everywhere, plus plus all of creation and everything else. I thought, Father, you must be bored. So how do you find fulfillment? And just like that, he spoke to me and he said, I enjoy the process. And that was important to me because it, it helped me see that the Lord isn't just with me. He's in me going through the same process I am. And, and, you know, my mind started racing with, with Jesus saying that God the Father is a spirit, John 4, 24, and that yet he created a physical world. And so how does God the Father, who's a spirit, work in his physical world? Well, he lives in us. We are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Our bodies are in it. He lives in our spirit. So out of our spirit, soul, and body, he flows into this physical world. So he goes through the process with us. And so that gave me great comfort that it's not just Psalm 23, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death and, you know, your rod and your staff comfort me. It is that he is walking with us. He is in us. So he is there. We take him to work. We take him to play. We take him wherever we are. He enjoys the process. So it helped me understand to, to be patient with the process, to not be my own worst enemy, because frankly, that's my natural tendency is to be my own worst enemy. You know, like I would be, um, well, I just, I just beat myself over the head, you know, uh, for, for things. And I realized that I'm not accountable to perfection. I'm just accountable to growth. Uh, and that's, that's a good thing. Um, Oh my. Oh, one of the things early on, uh, early on when I was younger, teenager, uh, thereabouts, I had been studying in Colossians 1.12 that says, giving thanks to the Father who has made us able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, 
who has translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. And I was looking at that translate, translated, how, how the born again process is a, a changing of citizenship from one kingdom to another. And he spoke to me and he said this, he said, your body, uh, as long as your body is alive, your body gives you authority on the earth as long as it's living. But when the body dies, your spirit and soul automatically become subject to the kingdom you're a citizen of. Poor grammar, perhaps, of which you're a citizen. But that's what that's what he said to me being a kid. You know, that that Colossians 1, 12 and 13, that your body gives you authority while it's alive on the earth. But when the body dies, your spirit and soul automatically become subject to the kingdom you're a citizen of. And it helped me to see that there's only, there's two kingdoms. You're, you're either in the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of light. You've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. You're one or the other. Your body gives you authority. But when the body dies, your spirit and soul are subject to the kingdom you're a citizen of. And so it, it helped me be aware of my citizenship, which is in heaven, according to Colossians chapter 2. And elsewhere, uh, the, the, it just became more heavenly minded, more aware that I'm a citizen of the kingdom. I'm a child of the king. And what a blessing that is. Um, Oh my, one of the other things, one of the other things that from a visitation with the Lord um, has, he was talking to me about the ways he communicates and, and a little bit kind of, of I don't want to say what he expected of me, but he said this, and I put this in my book, Pursuing the Seasons of God. And if you're just uh, new to me and, and uh, church, uh, Super House Church and uh, Church Without Walls International, um, I've made the offer before, I, I continue to make it, that my book, Pursuing the Seasons of God, has this next uh, word that I'm about to share. If you want to email me, I will upload the PDF of that book. It's also available online in the hard copy and all that. Uh, but if you want to email me at C-W-O-W-I, at AOL.com, C-W-O-W-I at AOL.com. It just stands for Church Without Walls International. It's the acronym for that. C-W-O-W-I at AOL.com. And I'll upload a PDF of the book uh, for you. So just, just email me and let me know. But what he shared, with, the way he communicates, he said this. He said, sometimes, he said, I will talk to a person that is in, and it's intended, I'll communicate with a person that it's intended to be just between us, just between the two of us. Um, what you would call pillow talk. And that's the, the phrase he used, what you would call pillow talk. And pillow talk, you have to understand, is what a husband and wife would share when they're alone at night in their bed and they're just sharing about the day's events or maybe they're sharing loving thoughts and, and intentions and motives and their love with one another. And it's intended to be just between the two of them. It doesn't go outside that bedroom. And so it could be everything from loving and intimate. It could be something to just their reflection on the day. But it's pillow talk. It's not meant to be outside of those two relationships. It's not meant to be shared with the kids, the grandkids, the aunts, the uncles, the work, the friends, or whatever, the church people. And what he said was, he said, sometimes I'll communicate uh, with someone that's intended to be just between the two of us, what you would call pillow talk. But they will not valuing this will go and share that with a friend over coffee or tea or something. Thus, they have demonstrated they are not mature enough to handle yet this level of intimacy. And he said this, he said, and I will remain silent for a time to allow them to grow. And, um, and that finished that last part of that sentence, you know, bo both elements are, are amazing. They were life changing just to, to judge within myself what he shares and what he communicates, what he downloads, the things that I perceive and discern. It doesn't have to be words that I hear, but things I perceive, insights and wisdom and, and stuff, stuff that I know is from him. And uh, Paul mentions this in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, where he talks about how he was caught up into paradise. And he says he heard words that are not lawful to utter, not heard words not lawful to speak. And sometimes people make that into a big spooky, you know, whatever, they just don't know. But having been there and... I too have been to heaven. I too have, have things from the Lord uh, that would not be proper for me to share. Not because it's like some big secret or anything, but rather because it's intimate between the Lord and me, between the Father and me, and it's stuff that, that I value. And this will explain why, why some people, if you've ever done this, where you take something that the Lord has shared with you and then you tell somebody about it and you feel grieved, suddenly you feel like, oh, yuck, why, why, I'm sharing something that the Lord said, but why do I feel grieved at sharing it? 
Well, that is the reason why. Because you took something that the Lord intended to be between the two of you, and you didn't value it enough to hold it within yourself that you took it and shared it with a friend or something. And so as a result, the, your, the Holy Spirit was grieved because you did that. So it's a quick repentance, and it's like learn your lesson and don't share it with anybody else. Keep it confidential. And as you are confidential in the Lord, the Lord gives you more things. And, and, and as, he, as he can trust you, and you demonstrate that level of maturity that you're okay with that level of intimacy, then he can show you more things, things about people, things about nations, things about organizations, but you keep it to yourself as a matter of prayer, uh, first and foremost. Anyway, I've kind of gone on a little bit, but I hope that's a blessing. A few things that the, the Lord has spoken to me, uh, one way or the Father, one way or the other. Um, but just just take those things that he's spoken to you, that he's communicated to you, cherish them, and, and uh, go back and review them because they are life-changing then. They can be life-changing now. So anyway, God bless. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.